Hey everybody, it's your man Tyke coming to you with the finale to Bell Reed. All right, now I'm gonna ask that you hit that like button, go and subscribe to the channel, and I want you to share me because you know I'm more than worth it. Now, this is gonna be the finale to the Bell Reed's story. So, when we last left off, you know, the girl that I was messing around with had made the deal with, you know, her ancestor to ring the bell. And uh, she had told her ancestor, hey, if I ring this bell, you got to do something for me. You got to give me X, Y, Z. I don't want to be, I don't ever want to be whole again. That type of energy. So she came down to just like that. And the ancestor agreed to say, oh yeah, definitely. You'll never have to work for now. As long as you live to your dying day, you'll never be poor. You don't always have money. She gonna be working out for you. Is what it is. So now me and grandma got out the cemetery. We shared a little hag and dash. We talking. She going real good for me and grandma. So I start seeing the, the girl a little bit later. Now she like 17. She's always one year older than me, some shit like that. So she's 17. She driving a Lexus. Her and her family done moved over there from Ola Vista. And then I moved out there to Windermill. So they living a good life. So while they out there, I used to see her in passing. I used to see her when I used to go out to the club, Diamond. I used to see her when I used to go to the Breakfast Club and all that shit, the Palladium. All that shit, you know, she was on the scene. She was hanging out with the fine girls, with the dope boys and shit like that. She, you know, she was living her best life. You know, all the shit that she was doing as she was growing up. But she kind of started to look different to me as we got older, you know, and people change, right? She had started to look older to me. She began to look more European, more Jewish, Ozakanazi style Jew and stuff like that. She had started looking like that, but she was still, you know, always had a little, little shape to her, little, little hips, little ass, and the tits. She was fine, motherfucker, you know? So she always had that body, but she, but when I would mess with her, she was a little bit more dark skinned, more, you know, melanated, more, you know, mixed breed, but on the darker side type of chick. So I'm sitting my ass up there and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I remember the promise I made to grandma that I never lay dick to the bitch. I ain't never gonna screw her. Grandma, Cause I know what she did in the cemetery with her ancestors and things. So I ain't never gonna hit her. But I couldn't help but look, it is what it is. So a uh, couple years pass, you know, I'm like 18, 19, 21. I'm like 20, 21 at the time. I done got my nuts cracked. Got a baby mama. So, you know, I go over there to Windermere to this life insurance policy place. And I say, let me be responsible. You know, I'm working. Got a job now. Let me get life insurance on myself and the kids. You know, so I go in there. You know, I get old little term life insurance policy and bullshit term. You know, $200,000 for $23 a month. That type of shit there, you know. So I think I'm doing the right thing. Put my son on it. So, yeah, you know, I'm responsible. So as I'm walking out, no, as I'm walking into the life insurance policy building, I see her walking out. So I see her walking out and I'm like, damn, chick, fine. There she go. I ain't seen her in a while. You know, she a hot girl now. She driving Lexus. They, she done moved up in the world. You know, her ancestors, you know, can doing their part. Got the deal going strong with her. So I said, okay, okay, okay. So she said, hey, tight. I said, hey, what's up, girl? You know, I say, you all right? Like, yeah, I'm cool. And I say, give me a hug. You know, so, you know, I'm still a young cat. I'm going to shoot my shot when it come down to it. So, you know, I grab her, you know, squeeze on her ass and, you know, press on her little neck, you know, hump on her little leg a little bit, you know, trying to, you know, flirt. And she slapped my hand. And she said, boy, you better stop. And I'm like, boy, I was like, I'm a grown-ass man. Nah, you know, I, nah, I am tempted to knock off, but, you know, no. Nah. I still said, Grandma, but hey, it ain't gonna stop me from feeling on her ass a tit, flirt, getting a little kiss, a little smack here and now. So she's sitting up there saying, I'm, you know what your grandma said, I'm gonna tell your grandma on your ass. And I say, no, 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 we cool, we cool. So I haven't, I wasn't hanging around with grandma as much at that time because, you know, I had started my own family, trying to do my own thing. So I say, okay, let me go over here to grandma and let grandma know. And I seen old girl and shit like that, and we chilling. So I get off work, 
I go over there. It's about 5.30 in the afternoon. And I knock on the door. But I see the I see the Lexus that the girl uh, drove. You know, my former little piece. You know, childhood sweetheart. You know, and uh, the current descendant of the aunt, uh, the current descendant to my grandma girlfriend like the, the the lady my grandma had a romantic relationship with from her past and shit so i see her car over there at grandma house so you know uh i walk in and everything like that and i say hey so i see her sitting on the couch with grandma and they talking and stuff and grandma sitting up there laughing and they just having a good old time so I say, hey, and grandma say, hey, here goes my girlfriend, my friend girl. And they just happened. She bringing grandma back over there to her house, Levi Garrett, red man, golden blend. She like whining and dying to grandma, trim grandma real good, y'all. So I say, okay, grandma, where well, it's like this. So I say, well, I see you got company, grandma, from the roll out. So, you know, I roll out. I stay away about two, three days, come back over there to see grandma again. Uh, by now, I'm catching the city bus. You know, I'm still on the city bus. I ain't got my little whip yet. So I, you know, grandmama, you know, what's going on? So now I see the Lexus truck there again. I mean, the Lexus car there again. And I'm like, huh. So instead of me knocking on the door, you know what I mean? Instead of me going directly in, I knock on the door. And nobody said come in in the living room. But some say, go around, look in the window. So I go around, look in the window. So I see, you know, I got there like 536. So I see grandmama sitting on the edge of the bed. And the chick covered up, the young girl, the chick covered up in the bed. You know what I'm saying? And grandma had got on the side of the bed with a little nightgown on and shit. You know, a little bathrobe and stuff. And I see the chick in the bed. So her and grandma just had a little, you know, sex relationship and shit. So I jumped down and I went and sat on the stairs and shit. And I was acting like I was, uh, you know, listening to my little Sony Walkman headphones and shit. And I, so when they came out, she said, baby, how long you been out here? I said, I just got here, grandma. I had been there for like an hour and a half. I, who knew how long they was in there doing their thing? So I said, okay, cool. So when she left, you know, I went in there. And grandma said, you hungry? I said, yes, ma'am. So she went and bought some grits and scrambled me about two eggs. So I'm sitting out there eating grits and eggs with grandma. I said, grandmama, I say, everything all right? She's like, yeah, my girlfriend just came over in. She bought me this right here. I say, ain't that? I say, you know that's the chick from the, you know, because I'm thinking grandma can see now, old brain, whatever. I say, you know that's the chick from the cemetery who ancestors who say she gonna ring the bell and she, you know, she say, yeah, I know. She say, but she's just a sweet girl. And it's just, I'm so familiar about her. I say, all right, grandma, you got it. So now, uh, you know, I'm still taking care of my family, so I'm not hanging around grandma that much. And grandma living her life. I don't know how often she mess around with old girl, but it is what it is. So out of nowhere, one day, I don't want to got me a car. You know, I don't want to got me a car and things like that. And so out of nowhere, grandma called me. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun, people. I'm jumping the gun. So now I'm seeing the girl around town. So now I'm seeing the girl. And the girl is frequent, frequenting the cemetery and shit because you got to pass by Old Winnegar Road to get the windmill. If you're going up Old Winnegar Road, you make a left on a on Violin Road, and it'll take you around the corner around the windmill. So she have to pass by the cemetery. So I'm I'm driving my ass around by there, you know, because my baby mama lived over there at Ola Vista. So I drive my ass over there. I see the girl in the cemetery. She dressing like regular herself you know short shorts looking fine as fuck you can see the little red bitch running up in the cemetery i don't think she rang the bell or nothing like that so i'm like oh that's weird so you know i keep on going so again i'm driving over there to windermere to pay my life insurance and shit like that so now as i'm walking out she's walking in to pay her life insurance too as she walking in there to pay her life insurance and y'all remember this about the life insurance it's gonna make a big sense in the, in the end of this story so she going there and she pay her life insurance and i see her in passing so as i see her in passing i look in her face and she looked like she got aged about 10 years people we she was always one year older than me but she looked way older than me like life been hitting her ass hard you know you get that when you're drinking you're partying you're doing shit like that 
Plus, she sitting out there fucking some some old seventy year old woman like my grandma, sixty some year old woman. Sorry, like my grandma. So you know, life hitting her. Who knows? She had another. You know how many dicks she was taking back in. I don't know. I'm just speculating. So she walk in there and she like, hey, type, you know, so she still don't know that I know her and grandma got this type of relationship. I say, hey, how you doing? You know, so normally I sit my ass up there and, you know, give a hug, flirt with her. But I just gave a little, you know, sideways, little chill hug, you know, because now I know what it is with you and grandma. So I ain't, I ain't crossing that path. So I say, okay, I say, you getting you some life and shit. I say, you taking care of yourself. I say, I like that. I say, I was taught to be responsible and shit, so you know I'm doing it for my kids. She's like kids, yeah, kid, you know, yeah. So we loose game, exchange pleasantries and shit like that. So now I'm not on the city bus no more. So I got a car. She like that's a nice little car. It fits you. It just was a '97 Ford Escort. You know what I'm saying? And she's still driving this big ass Lexus, decked up, gold chain, all that shit. So I'm like, yeah. So now I ain't even in this bitch lead financially, and I know how she got that. Because remember when me and grandma walking out the cemetery, I heard her make the deal with the lady saying how she was going to, you know, if she going to ring this bell when she when she get old enough and die and she going to take over this woman's place as a bell reaver of the families, you know, she need to be well compensated, you know, live fast, die young type energy. So I said, cool, we got it, you got it, yada, yada, we said, thanks, she go in there and she pay her bill, so I'm rolling. So nine, you know, about four or five days passed. I said, I ain't seen grandma in a while. And I was meaning to go see grandma, but I didn't. So I'm just saying, nah, hold off. I said, you know what, spirit, I'm gonna listen to you. Grandma, I need to chill a little bit. You know, I'm taking care of my kids, it is what it is. People, I get an urgent call. And when I get an urgent call, grandma, tight, come here, come here, it's an emergency. Get over here, boy, get over here, boy. I said, yes, ma'am. So. I flush it. Woo, took me about 15 minutes to get over there, y'all. I flush it. I bust in the door, pistol in my hand. Grandma, what, what, what? Grandma say, baby, she on the ground. She ain't moving. Help her, breathe in her. Give her mouth to mouth resuscitation. Now I'm sitting up there now. People, let me stop the bitch. Mother. Let me stop the story right here now. All right. I'm a real nigga. I'm a real nigga to my cold. Now, I know what her and grandma do. I, I seen them motherfuckers. I repeat that when I seen them in the bed. I know what they're doing. And she, grandma telling me to get a bit mouth to mouth resuscitation. And she on the ground with her mouth wide open. Her eyes and like glossed over and shit. So they be practically dead for all I care. And I am not going to put my mouth on her mouth after what she could possibly be in here doing with grandma. So I looked at grandma. I said, grandma, I, 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 man, call this shit in, grandma. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, man. God. Yeah, no. She said, you got to save a save a type. You know CPR. You the only one in the family take that type of shit. I said, Grandma, go get me a washcloth out the bathroom, man. Soap it up now. Nah. What? I said, Grandma, I just want to make sure her mouth clean now. Nah. I said, I ain't put my mouth on nobody's shit. Go on, Grandma, now nah, stop. Grandma, go in the bathroom, get the little washcloth. You know, Wipe out that, get it, and I wipe the bitch lips off, you know, chin, get all under her lip and shit, get the teeth and shit. The last thing I want to do is taste grandma's motherfucking old ass vagina and shit. I ain't got time for that shit. Y'all don't judge me. I, 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 hey, ooh. Life hard. Life hard, boy. Life hard. So I thought I done cleaned the bitch mouth up and shit like that. So I breathe the breath into her, do the CPR. And as soon as I did it, you know, she. <gasps> <sighs> she came back to life all that breath flew back in her ass right so but she she looked different her eyes was always like a nice brown to them but this time they had got a real light almost like cat eye like hazel eyes but a little darker than just the like the green hazel just a little dark so she got up and when she got up she looked different so grandma helped her up and grandma went to the kitchen and got her some water so then I fell on the ground. I fell out right where she was and I took her spot on the ground and I like kind of went into a little trance. So when I went into a little trance, grandma was nursing her. So then grandma grabbed me and started nursing me. And grandma picked me up and grandma sat me on the couch on the sofa opposite her. So I'm sitting up there and I felt my right shoulder go numb, people. My 
my right shoulder went numb as fuck. It, 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 it's like when when like you've been your arm been stuck for in one position for so long and then when you finally move it the blood start flowing through and trickling through it it had that type of shit going on so i'm like damn what's going on here so i'm looking at her and i just and i came to i say this bitch stole some of my life for us to make herself live again i say this nasty bitch but i wasn't gonna say that to grandma because grandma was in an affair with this woman you know? So I'm like, letting it go, letting it go is cool. Just let it go, y'all. So I said, Grandma, I got to go. I got to go. I ain't got time for this shit. I got to go. So I left Grandma that nurse in the system. So now I'm pissed off. I go home. I'm having nightmares of me walking around the cemetery trapped in this bitch like it was. A, I couldn't walk out the cemetery like I'm beating my hand against her. I can see the road. I can see this lights. I can see all the shit there. But I'm stopping, I'm beating my hand against the, the vision of the door, boom, boom, like the entrance of the cemetery, and it's like an energy field stopping me. I can't get out, but I'm trying, so I had that nightmare about two, three days. So I'm busting and breaking sweats. So I end up going to, so the next month I hit, I end up going to pay my life insurance again, and I see her coming out of the life insurance place. And y'all, this is, this is so important for you. I see her coming out of life insurance policy place. So when I see her, she kind of like ignores me. She don't even recognize me. She ain't fucking with me like that. Like we normally would do some pleasantries and greetings and shit. She normally would give me that, but she ain't fucking with me no more like that. So I said, okay, cool. You know, I said, hey, how you doing? She said, how you doing, sweetheart? You know, hopped in a little Lexus and she floated out. So I go in there, I pay my life insurance premium. And I look at all the women in the thing, and all the women look similar to her. Like, they all look like they could be related, family and shit. I never noticed that. Never noticed it. So, you know, as I'm leaving, you know, back in the day, it was customary for men to shake women's hand and give them a little slight hug, little bump, little, little jaw to jaw, cheek to cheek, little peck, not no kiss, just like put the jaw to an older woman, young man do that. It made them feel good back in the day. So all the older women that stood up, you know, all of them were very similar built, built just like her, nice ass, hips and tits and shit, but you could tell they was older women. So, you know, I gave about four or five of them a hug and, you know, a little, little bump kiss. I say, thank y'all, I'll see y'all next month. Okay, baby, see you next month, tight. You so handsome, they saying all that shit, you know, I walk out of that bitch feeling like a big man. So I say, some off. So I say, I need to talk to grandma about this. I say, it's just not sitting right with me. It's not been a month since I done saved this lady life. So I finally go over there when grandma get off and it's just so happened she ain't visiting grandma. So I walk in there with, the, with grandma back of Levi Garrett, red man, golden blend, y'all. I walk in there with grandma back of, and I say, grandma, everything all right? She's like, grandma happy? Yeah, baby. She said, so-and-so just brought me, you know, this right here. My girlfriend just brought me this right here. And she bought me some food and everything. And I can refrigerate a kitchen full of food and everything. I said, okay, that's good. I said, Grandma, I said, can we talk about the night that shit happened when that lady passed out on the floor and I had, and you caught me over here to save her life, give her breath to breath suscitation and shit? And she said, yeah, you did a good job, baby. I thank you. See, that's my friend, girl. You know, that's my girlfriend. I said, I believe it. I said, now, Grandma, I said, I thank you under a spell. I said, and I'm here to help you, Grandma, because I don't appreciate what you're going through. She's like, what I'm going through? I said, yeah, Grandma, I said, I think something wrong. I said, I think you kind of like under a spell of that lady that got you bewitched and stuff. Because I said, you know what happened in that cemetery with that woman, right? She said, yeah, your little friend girl, couple about six, seven years ago, rang the bell and say that she was supposed to take that woman place. We both heard the same thing for riches and spoils. I said, Grandma, do you not see that you in a relationship with this young girl who probably inherited by your best friend. I say, remember the deal they made that when she died for all intents and purposes, you know, that she would take over her body and she would be the one to ring the bell for the lady. I say, what if that lady, you know, took over her body and killed her, stopped her heart and everything. And then when I say that the, the girl, the, the lady, your girlfriend from 30 years ago came back and possess that baby and that's who taking care of you now y'all in a relationship grandma she said i don't know what the fuck you talking about i don't think that can happen to me i don't know what you're talking about i said grandma 
I say, I, I, I say, Grandma, trust me. You raised me good enough in this magic shit. I know what's going on. I say, Grandma, you need my help to fix this shit. She's like, I ain't need your motherfucking help. I trained you. I say, Grandma, I say, either you're going to beat me down, fuck me up. I say, but you be witch. And I can smell it on you. I say, I can smell the stink. I say, that lady janky, Grandma. I was using all the words she used. She say, baby, you show. I say, Grandma, I'm your grandson. I love you, I know. I say, we got to fix this, Grandma. She say, well, tomorrow when I get off work, we going to go out there to the cemetery. I say, I see her ringing that bell every night. She go out there and she ring that bell with that little lantern. Ring that bell. I say, say all right. So the next day, Grandma get off work. Get off work by six, six days, six day in the evening. I get Grandma. I park the car. I drive over there. I park it at the church. Uh, me and Grandma walk to the cemetery. I have a white handkerchief. I said, Grandma, you're going to have to do exactly what I say. I say, I've trusted you all the years. You're going to trust me this time. She said, baby, I, you see more than me. Maybe God lead me. I got you. Well, I'm on your watch, whatever you say. I say, all right, Grandma. I say, thank you for trusting me. So now, Grandma is doing everything I say. We walking up there to the cemetery. I reach in my pocket. I take a white handkerchief out. I say, Grandma, put this white handkerchief on your right shoulder. Tuck it under your blouse if you got to now. I said, she say, okay. I say, all right. I said, nah. Let's keep on walking. We're going to walk up in here. I say, I bet she's going to be in here at that bell, ringing the bell. So as we walking up there, we hear the bell ring one time. One. Then, you know, about five minutes, ten minutes in between, that means she's doing the second walk around the cemetery to go ring the bell again. So by the time we get to the to the cemetery, I put a bottle of Paul Masson down and I had I grabbed all the change I could out of my cup holder in my car and I threw the change down there so I paid whatever. But a bottle of Paul Masson paid the cemetery to go inside. I'm walking with grandmama up there to the lady and I say, Grandma, there she go. So grandma goes and she walking with me and I got grandma in front of me this time around. So now grandma in front of me, we walk up there to the lady and she, you know, doing her little standing next to her with the little lantern. She don't run the bell a second time. I didn't give her a chance to ring the bell a third time because me and grandma interrupted her, right? So I say, grandmama, I say, that's not the little girl I knew. I say, she looked 20 years older and it's only been like five or six years. I say, your friend done possessed that baby already. And grandma say, and I ain't going to say her name. Grandma say, did you take advantage of that baby? Did you possess that baby? Are you my girlfriend from the old days? Because my son said, you got a hex on me. She said, did you fuck that baby over? And out of nowhere, the lady that was supposed to ring the bell, the bell read lady, you know, she had started looking real Jewish and white people straight up and here what it is. She said, I ain't take advantage of nobody. The bitch made a deal. It's, I get, she, she said, I'm going to give her riches and everything until it's time for her to motherfucking die. That bitch died. That body was still fresh. I came back and I'm going to live my life. And she said, what you upset about it, the guns you? Bitch, we had our relationship. You love me and I love you. We've been starting over. And grandmama was so angry. And grandmama, uh, you know, she reached her hand up there to slap grandma. I mean, for grandma to slap her because grandma felt like betrayed. And grandma, bitch, you ain't going to talk to me like that, you janky spirit hoe. You supposed to be dead, bitch. You supposed to stay dead. Now, they having a whole conversation. I stepped back, you know, because these two older women and now it ain't no ghosts talking to grandma. This 3D energy talking to grandma. So grandma arguing with the, the ghost who took over the young girl body, her answer, her, her, her descendant body. So her and grandma arguing now. This ain't this is spiritual war warfare between spellcasters and spirits. Also, it's a, a you know a, a warfare between lovers too. So it is what it is. Grandma had a life, y'all. So I see her arguing and shit. So I see grandma, you know, hand reach up to slap the woman. So I rush over there and I grab grandma's hand. I said, Grandma, don't hit her. I said, Not in here. They don't hit her, Grandma. And she's like, Bitch, you gonna raise your hand to me after all I do for you? And she was like, And she, yeah, she said, Yeah, I wouldn't remember just what Grandma said. You gonna raise your hand? To, the lady said, You gonna raise your hand to me, a gun, you bitch, after all I said I did to you? Oh, 
You out your motherfucking mind. You abandoned me. You left me for dead. You didn't check on me. You didn't ring the bell for me. Nothing. I'm buried here, bitch. And grandma was like, it's a cemetery for white people. What you bitch? She said, bitch, my family member's white. And she started saying that type of shit. So grandma was like, well, you don't get the motherfucking give me a hard time, bitch, because you died. I was living. And she's like, I'm trying to tell you, I came back for you. I did all this shit for you. I needed somebody. Why do you think your grandson was fucking with her? I put that shit together. Like, I knew I'd get to you one way. So now these star-crossed lovers and shit, man, this shit, I can't make this shit up, people. So now it's like, okay, what the fuck? So now the night, I done stopped grandma from slapping the spirit lady. So now the spirit lady get ready to slap grandma. So I say, I jump in front of the spirit lady and I say, I take the hit. I got a little more life. You know, grandma, oh, and they dealing with spirit. And they in the cemetery. I say, she hit grandma. She may strike, swipe grandma's soul out of her. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm young. I got a lot of life in me, y'all. So I jump in front of the lady. And as she went down to slap grandmama, I jumped in front of grandmama. And she ended up almost slapping me, but her hand stopped. And she like, you such a sweet grandbaby. She said, I wish you would have got with my little descendant. Y'all would have made some good kids. And she said, you gunji bitch, I'm going to let you live today. But get the fuck out my cemetery. And grandma was like, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, fuck you. So grandma started cursing her out. Now grandma crying tears out of her eye. So now grandma done went into a daze. Because the lady smothered some shit under her breath. And she turned around to ring the bell a third time. But I heard a voice say, like multiple voices say, don't let her ring that bell. Don't let her ring that bell. Y'all ain't gonna make it out of here. I kept hearing that shit from multiple different voices. And like these voices were coming from the cemetery, the grounds itself. And I said, oh, fuck, here we go. So when she went to ring the bell, that's when I put my hands on her. And I like stepped in between her and the bell and I pushed her back. Now when I pushed her back, now she in front of grandmama. And grandma, like, in a daze, you know, drooling out the mouth. And grandma making these little shallow noises, like, <laughs> like that. Like, she was trying to breathe hard, hyperventilating, I think, what they call it. Like, when you're blowing a plastic bag, I mean, a paper bag. So, as I'm sitting out there arguing with the motherfucking lady, like, you ain't gonna ring this bell. To me and grandma get out of the cemetery, you know better than that. And she's like, let me do my job. You don't hear them voices. You don't hear them coming. I got to say the dead. This is my job. And I'm like, oh, shit. So she reached in her pocket and she went to grab another bell. So when she reached in her pocket, I see what she was pulling out. Because she, you know, she had started wearing long black dresses and shit with the dressing like the Azakanazi Jews and nuns, whatever you want to call it. So she reached in her pocket. And she went to grab another bell. So when she grabbed the bell, she grabbed that bitch and she like. So when she went to do it a third time, I grabbed the bell, but I stuck my hand inside the bell and I gripped the little ball that hit the sides of the bit. And I'm wrestling with it and I snatch it out of her hand. So as I snatch it out of her hand, you know, she like, oh. So I said, you ain't even walk your third, your, your, your ass around again for a third time. So as the lady gets to walking around with the lantern, you know, I'm telling grandma, come on, grandma, put the handkerchief on your face. Put the handkerchief on grandma's face and I'm guiding grandma out. So I didn't look back as I'm leaving the cemetery and shit like that. And our grandma had the handkerchief wrapped around her eye, so I know she wasn't going to look back. But I was always afraid I was going to look back. But as I'm walking out of the cemetery... I hear like the dogs growling, the hellhounds, I'm gonna call them. Grandma here too. She say, baby, just keep walking. Don't they not gonna bite you. They can't bite you. That just know it. Don't look back. If you look back, they gonna get you. I say, yes, ma'am. So I'm tempted to look back because I could feel like them on me, people. And I put so I say, I'm gonna look back, I'm gonna look back. So I bury my head in the back of grandma's back in between her shoulder blade and our guy. So I say, I don't know how I'm gonna see when we get out of this bitch. I say, but then I say, okay, when you walk into the cemetery on the concrete, it slopes down. And I say, I feel the slope. And I say, and then it's asphalt versus, you know, sidewalk concrete. So I'm like, okay, once I feel the concrete and shit, I know I'm outside the cemetery. So boom, I feel the concrete outside the cemetery. I turn right, but my head is still down. 
I still got my head and grab my back because I don't want to look up and look and see in my peripheral inside the cemetery to see anything. So I just keep walking like that and I keep walking and I'm counting my footsteps and I'm, you know, I'm trying to use echolocation. I'm trying to use all my senses to make sure I don't look back. So when we get past the cemetery walls, because they were short, I realized we were past the cemetery wall because the dog growling was on the wall, but then it stopped growling. So I say, we must be clear. So I lift my head up from grandma's back. I grab grandma, I made grandma keep on the blindfold till I got her in the car. So I got in the car, I back up, I go up the road. When I went up the road, I realized it was a dead end back there by the church where we had parked. So I had to turn the bitch around. So I say, shit, I got to drive past. I'm going to look and see the cemetery and shit. I say, I'm fucked, man. So I prayed and I say, God, what to do? So God say, close your eyes and go on faith. So I closed my eyes. Grandma didn't take off her, her headband off her eyes yet. I closed my eyes and I had to back up and I had to pass by the cemetery on that road. I just closed my eyes, y'all, and I float that bitch. I'm doing 50 miles per hour easy because I just want to get in there. Now, when you come out the church or the road, you're going to get back on old and gone road. So I ain't know when to turn or nothing. I just say, well, you know, I'm going to feel the change in asphalt pressure. God got me. I'm praying every spirit, whatever, boom. So I close my eyes. I flow my little escort. And I'm, so once I get off and it's like the, the, it's like the little dip in the road right there. It felt different. So that's when I knew I was on old winter gone road. So I turned right by people. A truck could have came and crashed me and grandmama could have hit me. I ain't see, I ain't, I wasn't easy. Cause the cemetery right at the corner. Man, I made that right. As soon as I made the right, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to look back to the cemetery. So as soon as I opened my eyes, I was just finna run in the back of a Culligan water truck and I stopped dead on the back. And I just stopped leaving grandma with a crash. So then I said, Grandma, take your blindfold off. We got it. We out of that situation. And Grandma was just quiet. So Grandma was quiet. So we go on to the house and shit. I'm driving slow. I, so I go to I get to Grandma's apartment and shit. And I walk Grandma in. And Grandma just ain't Grandma, y'all. She just slow, you know, slowed down. She heartbroken. She hurt. She in a trance. I don't know what the fuck was going on. So after we get through doing that right now, I say, okay, Grandma, I got you. So I lay grandma, I took off grandma pants and I lay her down on the couch and shit like that. And I cover her up. So I go in there and I get some ammonia, get some spring water, get some lime, get some Florida water, get some natron. Uh, grandma, had, grandma had some natron. I get some natron salt, put it in the water and I get a rag and I light a bowl of sage and I start smoking the sage, you know, uh, around grandma. And I get a rag and I wipe her my whole body down. You know, I wipe her thighs and legs down all the way up to her panty line. And I wipe her feet real good. I did each leg. Then I did her arms all the way up to her bra strap area. And I wiped her down with the with the line, the, the Florida water, the spring water, and ammonia. And, you know, I did each one. I did the back of her neck. I did her face and stuff. And grandma dead sleep, dead tired. So after I washed it down and stuff like that, I put the great the sage and I was just saying prayers, song, reading out of songs and all that stuff. Psalms like 140 or something. So I knew I had to stay there to babysit grandma all night because grandma taught me how to do this. So I sat in the chair across from grandmama and I'm sitting there all night with grandma. Me and grandma just, just all night, y'all. And I knew grandma and I had to stay awake and I knew grandma probably could get up and be close to go back to the cemetery. I didn't want that lady to come out the cemetery and come to grandma's house to finish the job. I was on night watch with grandma. So I stayed all the way up there and I ain't go to sleep. I just kept saging and praying. So that's the most praying I ever did, y'all. So about six day break in the morning, the sun comes shining through the window. Grandma wake up, refresh. She say, baby, you was here all night. She say, what's all this spiritual stuff on the ground? I said, you would teach me how to make spray. Grandma had no, 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 no remembrance of what happened to you. Cause she woke up. She said, let me get dressed. I gotta get to work, baby. She said, you want me to take you home? I said, I got my car out there, grandma. She said, all right. Well, go ahead, take your nap, lock the door, lock, lock the bottom lock when you leave. 
I said, yes, ma'am. So grandma get dressed and she happy go lucky. She make her coffee and she headed to work. I say, damn. So now I clean up and I say, this bitch, I tried me and grandma. I say, I'm going to get that hoe. So now people, I'm upset at the lady. I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm heated. You know, I say, this hoe going, that hoe trying to get grandma. I'm fuck her. So now I say the next night, it was two nights. I think it's on the weekend. I say two nights past. I say, I'm going to get this bitch. So I had made some ammonia. I had made the same spray. Grandma showed me how to ward off evil spirits and shit. I had went to the dollar store, got two spray bottles, filled the bitch up with lime, ammonia, lime, fresh squeezed lime, Florida water, natron. I shook it up real good. And I said, I'm going to get this bitch. So I had two of them spray bottles. I hooked them to my little pants and shit. I put on my all white. I had on my little bandana in my pocket, all that shit. I was out there going for both. So when I went there, I parked my car at the church again. And I say, I'm finna tell this bitch off. I say, I'm finna rebuke this hoe. So as I'm walking up to the thing, it's like 6.30 at night. It get real dark. So I go in the cemetery and I'm like, okay, I heard the first bell. Boing. Okay, so I start like walking real fast. She walk around the cemetery second time. Boing. Walk around the cemetery, so get to the third time. So she at there and she getting ready to ring the bell the third time. So here, I just run up in the cemetery. So I throw the bottle of Paul my son, and I throw about 45, 50 cent out my pocket right then and there, bam, whatever I had. You know, I threw it there. So I paid the cemetery and I gave him some drink. So I knew I couldn't let her ring that bell the third time, you know, or else I have to wait. Some just were telling me I have to wait. So I ran up that tour. But when I ran up that tour, I just started spraying them with the two spray bottles full of ammonia and shit. <laughs> spraying a good tour, I'm spraying a good fashion, y'all. And she like, stop, uh, ah, uh, ah, what you doing, stop. And I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I say, bitch, you hurt grandma, you hurt grandma. She say, that bitch knew what she was getting into. They out of grown folk business. She talking to me like, and I'm just spraying her. And I soaked that bitch with them bottles. I soaked her. So I know she couldn't ring the bell the third time. So now as I'm like spraying her down and she laying on the ground and shit in front of the bell, I hear a bunch of voices like, but they like demon raspy voices. Man, we owe you one. Good job, dog. Good job. Yeah. And they like, yeah, we owe you one. Yeah, yeah. It was like a thousand, like thousands, thousands, tens of thousands, but I could hear them each. I'm like, yeah, we owe you one. Yeah. So she didn't get a chance to ring the bell. She said, what you did? I got to ring the bell. It's my job. And that type of shit. Then I'm like, oh, my God. So I thought I defeated her. So I know she carried a secondary bell in her pocket. So I reach in her pocket. And I get the bell out, but I some told me don't let that bell make a third bell noise. So when I reach in her little long dress black pocket, I grab the bell and I instantly put my finger and I hold the little ball on the string that hit the bell to strike. I hold it, right? So I pull it out and I instantly put the blindfold over my head, over my face, and I turn around and I start walking. So now I just got my, I got my, uh, right hand with my hand on the bell so now i just got the spray bottle in my left hand with the other one clipped to me so i go and i start spraying like making a mist cloud around me as i'm walking out of the cemetery you know in case any spook trying to get me you know i'm cleaning my aura as i go because i already done sprayed the bitch down for her and grandma y'all sprayed it down I'm not seeing again. I'm looking at with the, the pattern of the asphalt versus cement to change and all that shit there. I hear the hounds and shit on me. I hear them, but I realize I got that spray on me. They can't touch me. They just do a scare tactic. And I heard her saying, what you did? What you done did? What you done did? And I heard her kill saying, what you done did? And I'm like, fuck that. So I keep walking blindfold. And I get, I feel the, the pavement change up outside the cemetery. So I walk right. When I walk right, I'm walking down. I'm still got to pass by the cemetery wall. The dog is still chasing me. But it's not outside of the cemetery. It's still inside the wall. So I know it ain't that. So now I ain't spraying no more. So now I ain't spraying no more, y'all. So I get to the corner. I see my car. And as soon as I cross the street, I take off my blindfold. I get in my car. And here it is. I get on the road. Boom, boom. 
get on the road, I put the bell on the seat of the car, get on the road, I go home, and I instantly went to grandma's house, and I just parked my car in front of grandma's house, and grandma don't know I did this. So, I just say that slept in the car, because I'm tired as fuck, I ain't even go inside, all white, bell on the car, I meant bell on the seat of the car, everybody looking at me crazy, grandma, get up for work the next morning, knock on the window, baby, you been out here all night? I say, yes, ma'am. I say, I'm finna go home. I say, I was tired, grandma. I got off work. All right, don't work yourself to death. I'm going to work. I say, cool. So I get up, go to my house, take a shower and shit. Now I'm going to work early in the morning. So as I'm getting off, you know, I stop at the, I stop at the paper and shit. And I see on the paper, you know, 50-something-year-old woman found dead in the cemetery off of Old gone Road. 50-something-year-old woman. Look at the age now. And so they said she had to be a member of the church because of how she was dressed. She was dressed like an Azekanazi Jew or like a nun. And they thought she was a member of that little white people church right there. Nobody went to it. It was cryptic as fuck. So she was found dead in the cemetery. So the people in the, the reporters and shit said she was probably going there because she was dressed like how they used to ring the bells back in the old days. So she was probably doing a ritual and her heart gave out on her, right? And they made that, that shit made the paper. So I said, oh shit. So now I done killed the little demon bitch that resided in her or did on the way she was out there ringing the bell, people. And this is a question I'm proposing to you now. Was she out there ringing the bell because her body was buried in that cemetery and she was stopping the people from getting her body out that cemetery, the grave robbers. Keep in mind that cemetery was meant for white folk. She was the only colored lady buried in that bitch, right? Was they trying to remove her fucking essence from that? And that's why she used to come out there and ring that bell so much so she could stay tethered to this bitch and she could stay in that cemetery. They couldn't steal her soul out of that white cemetery. Just a question. So now I sit up there. I, I sit up there. So now this lady done passed away. Grandma, old girlfriend and shit. Then body swapped the descendant. So now remember I told you we were going to the life insurance policy case and I was playing life insurance. So about... 30 days after that situation happened, I never told grandma what I did. That's something I got to take to the grave where grandma know now that she in heaven. They delivered grandmama a $30,000 check off of that woman's life insurance policy. She had got a life insurance policy she had made my grandmama the beneficiary of her life insurance policy because she really did love my grandma. They was lovers, people from old days. They delivered my grandma a $30,000 check and grandma said, I got a check from my old girlfriend. She must have just passed. Keep in mind, Grandma didn't know all this shit happened. This is what I knew. And I never told Grandma because I didn't want Grandma going to the cemetery fucking with the one, right? So she like, ain't God good? The lady passed away. She gave Grandma a $30,000 life insurance policy check. Grandma bought, uh, uh, she bought a Honda Civic. She kept the Buick, but she bought a Honda Civic that was going to be her drive around car and the Buick going to be her work car. Bring me the Honda Civic. <sighs> now people are going to stop the story right there. That's what happened. Now I don't know if you believe me. I don't know if you think the shit was crazy. But I'm letting you know the shit happened. All right, everybody, you know what I like to say. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. But it's the truth, no doubt. Take care, God bless, and much love. And remember, when it comes time for somebody to ring your bell, just make sure it's one of your relatives do it. You just may be able to experience in the sound. Take care, everybody. God bless.